Today we are going to talk about validation versus verification. So the reason these topics are important is that bad data is a terrible thing. And say we've got this lady called Bowen Thring from Santon in South Africa and she has to fill in a form and she puts in for her name BA1 and her surname 3NG for Thring and then her date of birth well she doesn't like telling people her age so she puts the 20th of the 13th 1878 and the city she's got a bit of attitude so she puts Santon Dahl and her country she's lazy to type so she puts SA and she clicks save now, if the system contains all of this data for Baywin Thring, it's not going to be too good, is it? So, let's look at how we can avoid this. We can minimize user input, and that's things like GUI controls, like checkboxes, where you can tick or untick as a field, list boxes, when you only give people a certain amount of choices to type to to click on like the cities could have been a, a, a list box and then you can do other components where a user just can click on an item and this will avoid user input error you can also use default values for example in a high school admin program most learners that come into a high school will be in grade 8 because the other grades take in very few learners so we could make the default value 8 for the grade field. But also, if a high school gets a lot of students from a certain primary school, the primary school could send their database to the high school so that there's not as much input is required. So you must understand and know the difference between verification and validation. So verification is when we check whether the data that's been inputted is accurate or not. And often data gets copied to, in, to put it into a computer. So was it accurately copied? Did the person transferring it, often it's a data capturer, did they type it incorrectly? And that is what verification means, is the data exact? So the most common methods are a visual check. Often your data gets inputted and they send it back to you with an email and say, please check these details are correct. Or we can do double data entry. And you have two operators type the typing in data instead of only one. And if their data does not match, we know there's an error. You've also seen this with inputting your password for certain um, websites. And if your two passwords don't match, then you've made an error. So validation is different. This is where the computer checks that the data you've inputted makes sense. An example is in a month. It can only have the values 1 to 12, nothing else. So the way you can remember it is that validation we are checking that the data is acceptable. So there are a whole lot of different checks that we can do on data to validate it. The first one is the format check. Sometimes we have requirements for a string of characters. They need to have a certain format. For example, we could have an ID code and it needs to have LLL 000. That means it needs to always have three letters followed by three digits. So if somebody typed in AB9423, we know that's wrong because that 9 should have been a letter. There's also a type check. We need to check whether people are inputting the right type of character. So if somebody, if you asking for input of a number and somebody types in letters, it would be wrong. For example, below, if somebody tells you there are 88 in letters, that would not be accepted. A range check is when a value must be within a particular range of values. 
So for, for example, agenda could be M or F. Symbols on a mark sheet would be A to F. And birth dates, the acceptable values or the range would be 0 to 120. Then there's the length check. So, for example, we do not accept an entry where they've typed in more than a certain number of characters, like a city name may not be more than 20 characters. Although if you're in Wales, like in the picture at the bottom, you would know that that may not work there. You may need a few more characters. A character check is when we check that a string of characters does not contain invalid characters or symbols. So for example, if we're registering a new baby's birth and name, you can't have numbers in the in the name. So Kate would be rejected. And then a presence check is compulsory fields. Usually these are indicated with a star on um, a data entry um, form and these are essential data items. They have to be entered. If they've left blank, then the, the computer will not allow you to carry on. So here's a the little mnemonic to remember the difference between verification and validation. The E in verification stands for exact and the A in validation stands for acceptable. Here's an example question from a past exam. So the question says a code must take the form LL99 LL, where L is a letter and 9 is a digit. So the code at the top that I made up, CX34DZ, would be correct. The question says a presence check has already been used to ensure data has been entered. Name two other types of validation check that can be used to test the code is valid. Now check one would be a format check where we check there are two digits, two, two letters, two digits, then two letters. And the second would be a length check. In this example, we need six characters in our string. And then B says, give one example of invalid test data for each of the validation checks you have named in part A. And each, in each case, give a reason why it fails a check. Each example of test data must be different. So check one invalid test data is 456355. So we've only put digits here, no letters at all. And the reason it's not valid is it does not have any letters as required. And then check two inval invalid test data. That was the length check. So I've put in a code of only five characters, ZZ34X. And the reason it's not valid is the string is too short. And that's all for today. Have a good week.